In this video, we will see how seismic acquisition is carried out, what are the various spread geometries, and the resulting stacking chart and fold coverage. First of all, we need to understand fold. It is simply the number of times a common depth point is imaged and is given by the equation where C is the number of channels, del X is the picket interval, del G is the geophone group interval or receiver interval, and del S is the source interval. From this equation, we can see if geophones are planted on every picket and shooting is also carried out on every picket, then the terms on the right cancel out and the fold is equal to half the total number of channels. For the sake of simplicity, we consider a recorder with only 8 channels. Now let's consider split shooting spread geometry. As we can see, it is a symmetric spread as equal number of geophones are planted on both sides of the source. Now as the wave moves down from the source, it gets reflected at the interface, which is the boundary between the two layers. And finally, it is received by the geophone. It may be noted that the reflection point is in the middle of the source and geophone receiver. In this way, waves propagate and are received by all the geophones. Let's mark dots below each of the reflection points. Now the spread moves forward and again shooting is carried out and waves are reflected and recorded at the geophones. Let's again mark dots below each reflection point. In this way, the spread moves forward and the same process is repeated. We can count the number of dots under each reflection point, also called the depth point. This gives us the fold coverage, which is the number of times waves are reflected from a subsurface depth point. In terms of imaging, the fold indicates the number of times a depth point is imaged. This layout of dots under each depth point is called a stacking chart. We can see that the maximum fold in this case is 4. Let's consider that the picket interval is 50 meters. Now putting this value in the fold equation gives the maximum fold as 4. This indicates that the equation gives the maximum attainable fold for a given spread geometry. It may be noted that fold gradually builds up at the start of the line, attains its maximum value in the middle of the line and then gradually drops at the end of the line. Now let's repeat the same experiment with the split shooting geometry but now the shooting is carried out at two picket intervals. We can see that now the maximum fold is 2. Now let's consider an end on shooting with an asymmetric spread. As we can see we don't have equal number of geophones on both sides of the source. We take a shot and mark the reflection points. The spread moves forward and we add a geophone at the back end. This is called roll in. In this way, the spread moves forward and we keep on adding geophones until the spread becomes symmetric. Now the spread will move forward in symmetric form. And finally, at the end of the line, the spread again becomes asymmetric as we start removing geophones from the front side. This is called roll out. In this case, again the maximum fold is 4. 
Now let's consider the split and end on shooting spreads in terms of fold coverage. We can see that the split shooting spread has larger no fold region at the two ends and the fold buildup is slower. On the other hand, the end on shooting spread has much smaller no fold region and fold builds up quickly and fold coverage region is much larger. Thus end on shooting is preferred over the split shooting. Let's consider the link between pickets and common depth points or CDPs which are the reflection points in the subsurface. It can be seen that the CDP interval is half of the picket interval. If shooting is carried out on every second picket, then the receiver interval is equal to the picket interval while the source interval is double of the picket interval. If pickets are assigned numbers, then it is a good practice that the corresponding CDP numbering is doubled. We can also compute the first CDP number from where the wave gets reflected from this equation. From the figure it can be seen that RP1 is the first picket number, SP1 is the first source point number and CDP1 is the first CDP point where we get reflections. So this was a simple demonstration of various seismic acquisition geometries.